Oh, another week, another lesson. Here we go. All right, let's get started with seven, six, complex numbers. All right, so before we get started with this, uh, first off, square root of 36, what is it? Tyler? Very good, six. What about, what's the square root of 144? This letter? 12. Perfect. And last but not least, let's go with what is the square root of 81? Mia? Fantastic. 9. So for this section with complex numbers, we're going to be talking about square roots, but we're going to be talking about this. And you feel like this should be 6, all right? But there's a problem because of that negative in there. And that's why it's a complex number, all right? But it doesn't really change too much how you do the problem. The one thing you need to know is the square root of negative 36 can be written as negative 1 times the square root of 36. So that's where the 6 comes from, but there's another piece that's missing, and that's the square root of negative 1. So let's stop here and let's talk about this, okay? So the square root of negative 1, this is what makes numbers complex, all right? So we have real numbers, and then this would be the opposite of real, which is imaginary. Now, what is an imaginary number? Well, I like to think of it as a number you're not going to encounter in this world. All right, like you can encounter the square root of 2. Okay, where, where does that come from? Well, if you have a triangle that's 1 foot by 1 foot, then the hypotenuse is the square root of 2, okay? Or, you know, you can come up with a half. Well, you have a full hoagie, and then you can have half a hoagie. So the square root of negative 1 is definitely a number you're not going to come in contact with in this world. So what we like to do is we like to say that the square root of a negative 1 is i. Now, what is i? Well, it's the square root of negative 1. It's easy to remember because it's imaginary, all right? So, going back to the beginning of the year, you have, you know, integers, all right? They're like plus and minus all your whole numbers, things like that. And then you have rational numbers. Okay, these are all your fractions. And then you have real numbers. All right, and these are like, all your rationals, all your integers, all your square roots. But then over here, there's another section. And these are your imaginary numbers. This is like where your square root of negative 1 is, your square root of negative 2, all those things. All right, so we're going to be going back and forth between reals and imaginary. So now that we know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1, right? let's kind of just keep that up there in the top portion of our uh, paper. So now the first one was, go figure, the square root of negative 36. Well, this is just the same thing as the square root of 36, but I'm going to add an i to it. Why? Because this is going to be, as I did it a minute ago, this. This is 6, and this is i. All right? So let's hop on over. So this was a. Let's hop over to b. Top over to B, okay? And then in B you have a 
this. Well, that over that. So we have the square root of negative 16 over the square root of 25. Well, the easy part is square root of 25 is 5. But what's the square root of 16? Mm, on that. 4. Awesome. And we know that the square root of negative 1, okay, because I can break the square root of uh, negative 16 up into 16 times the square root of negative 1, is i. So this is just 4 fifths i. You could write it as 4i over 5. You can write it as 4 fifths i. I try not to write it as 4 over 5i. It just looks weird to me. Not a big fan of it. Okay. Now let's go to let's go to C. Okay. And C is the square root of negative 54. All right. So let's first just view this as 54. Give me two numbers, um, Nina, that go into 54. 9 and 6. Perfect. Give me two numbers that go into uh, 6, Reuben. 2 and 3. And Mr. Davis, what do you got for 9? 3 and 3. So we notice we got this pair of 3s here. These guys don't have anything. So that pair of 3 is going to come out. And then inside the house, you're going to have a 3 and a 2. Well, that's just 6. Now, notice I didn't address the negative, did I? But the more you do this, the more you're not going to be worried about that negative. You're just going to simply add an i in there. Okay? So it's going to be 3i root 6. The i is never going to go inside your square root, because remember, i is the square root of negative 1, so that's just going to come outside. It's always going to be outside. So I feel after one more, you guys should be pretty good with this. All right, let's look at uh, D. And D you might be really confused about, but you shouldn't be. Because remember, we got to use all of the tricks in our bag. And we know we can rewrite this as but Mr. Puckett, what is negative 48 divided by negative 3? Wow. That's just 16. So this is just 4. All right? So, a little quick one here for you guys. All right, let's just go over some examples. This is not in your book. Just, you know, coming off uh, here, off the dome with some of them. So, the square root of negative 64, well, I'm thinking of that this is just the square root of 8, or the square root of 64, which is 8 and the square root of negative 1, which is i. So it's just 8i. What about uh, negative 196? Well, that's just going to be the square root of 196, which is 14i. All right. What about one more here? Let's say um, square root of negative 49. And that's just going to be the square root of 49, which is 7. See the pattern? Okay, it's just view it as the number, take the square root of that, and we're just adding an i. Now, if it's not perfect, say, well, what's the square root of negative 125? Well, treat it like 125. Circle your pair. That's going to come out. This number is going to stay in. But then just like over here, I'm just going to add an i to the number outside. Okay? So one more here. All right, let's just say negative square root of 72. I'm viewing this as 36 and 2, and 36 is 6 and 6. So I'm going to be writing this as 6i 
root. So hopefully that's been, um, you know, made a little clearer for you. It's not too tricky. All right, now I'm going to assign you some WebAssign problems, and I want you guys to work on them. All right, they're going to be entitled 7.6 Part 1.